It's the year 2024, and calendars can really mislead us when it comes to tracking time. Our perception of time is indeed quite tricky. Even the 1990s feel like ancient history to some of us, but we've been here for almost 300,000 years. We've been circling this pale blue for nearly 300,000 years. Think about what you've experienced in your own lifetime. We've lived through the events of the past 10 years, which, after the scientific revolutions of the last 100 years, have felt like a thousand years. Now, think about what we've gone through in 300,000 years, what we've witnessed. The devastations, the disasters, the famines, the cold spells we've seen. Yes, it got really cold, and it's going to get even colder. Not for just a few days, but for hundreds of thousands of years, we endured these cold periods somehow. Many of our relatives who couldn't withstand these conditions perished and vanished. We endured, but we are incredibly resilient. Indeed, today we will talk about those cold periods, the freezing temperatures we endured, and how Homo sapiens sapiens survived them. Human beings possess incredible resilience and adaptability. We can adapt to such conditions that are truly remarkable. In particular, the Ice Age, which began around 115,000 years ago and lasted with fluctuations for nearly 100,000 years, posed a significant challenge for us. It was so demanding that species like Homo erectus, which we coexisted with on Earth, went extinct during this age or shortly before it. But before we delve into the details, would you like to start by defining what the Ice Age is? Let's begin with that. First and foremost, it requires our planet to be cold for very long periods. We're talking about millions of years in these lengthy cycles. During this process, as far as we know, our Earth, in its 4.6 billion year history, has experienced five major ice ages where the planet's surface was gradually covered with ice. The first ice age occurred about 2 billion years ago and lasted for around 300 million years, with the most recent one being the most recent. When we look at this period, during its peak periods, much of America and Eurasia were covered with glaciers. The climate was much drier, and sea levels were much lower because seawater was trapped in ice. Steppes, green plains, and deserts were prevalent in some areas as vegetation. The animals that lived during this period were not entirely unfamiliar. There were brown bears, wolves, but there were also many that are no longer with us today. Mammoths, saber-toothed cats, giant sloths, and the disappearance of these animals is believed to have been greatly influenced by human hunting. So yes, as you know, since we've been around for 300,000 years, we've had quite a bit of interaction with species like these, and of course, our exposure to climates diversified after spreading from Africa. Looking at the environment, during these periods, more than 30% of the world was covered in ice. The average temperature was around 7 degrees Celsius while Antarctica was already covered in ice. All of North America and the northern part of Eurasia, including our country, were under glaciers. Rainfall was at nearly half of today's averages. As mentioned, Homo erectus and Neanderthals coexisted with us at certain times during this process. But we, Homo sapiens, had an advantage. While Homo erectus and the sea ovens were in Asia, and the Neanderthals were in Western and Central Eurasia, we were in Africa. Therefore, one of the answers to how we survived is our location. Yes, location was very important. Other species were exposed to abrupt climate changes as the Ice Age approached, making it difficult to access food and shelter. Some researchers argue that this known species went extinct due to these problems. While these claims may not be conclusively proven, it is safe to say that living conditions became extremely challenging. Moreover, after spreading from Africa, we coexisted with Neanderthals for a while, and according to some researchers, we might have contributed to their demise due to limited food resources. Now, let's get to the most significant factor that allowed us to survive in these harsh conditions. Stories. Yes, according to many sources, during these times, 
Homo sapiens developed a much more complex language than their other relatives and could even communicate fluently. This was what primarily set us apart from other species. A stronger command of language, the ability to observe our surroundings, communicate our observations to others, and pass them on to future generations changed everything. We could think abstractly, plan for the future, and transmit our technologies. It allowed us to collaborate and work together with other communities. One of the most significant pieces of evidence supporting this is Paleolithic cave art, which includes drawings dating back 30,000 years. They were telling us something. They understood nature, its seasons, plants, weather, and animals, and they had found a way to pass on this knowledge. In fact, according to some evolutionary biologists, many of the words we use today, such as fire, ash, who, we, have their origins in this era. Yes, Neanderthals were physically adapted to the cold and harsh conditions, but they couldn't escape extinction because they lacked these abilities and couldn't cooperate. What saved us was, again, our ability to unite. Another advantage was, of course, our hunting skills and technological innovations, which were connected to these factors. By the way, we know that all other hominies, i.e., human-like species, use tools and weapons. But our advantage was again our intellectual accumulation. About 50,000 years ago, a few species developed tools, including pointed weapons. However, while Neanderthals preferred close-range hunting due to their physical advantage, Homo sapiens preferred coordinated long-range hunting with spears, which provided us with protection. We based our hunts on specific strategies, changed the direction of animal escape routes by lighting fires, and shared plans through communication. The real advantage was not tool use, but our communication skills. We obtained limited resources from other species through this, leaving them with very little. This was one of the significant factors contributing to the extinction of these species. Of course, clothing, according to many scientists, is the most important invention in human history. It led to the invention of the needle, and with these needles, our ancestors designed and sewed clothes tailored to their needs. Neanderthals also wore clothes, but they were a bit more casual, putting on whatever they could find. Homo sapiens, on the other hand, sewed different layers from different types of hides, including inner, outer, and top layers. So, we had a certain style. Finally, they sought shelter in deep rock hollows and riverbeds and on hilltops to protect themselves from very cold weather and strong winds. They could use vegetation as a kind of roof and even make doors for cave entrances. They already had quite warm homes because they had mastered fire. In fact, makeshift homes with skeletal structures date back to this era. They began building homes for themselves by arranging mammoth bones in a certain way and covering them with hides. By the way, Homo sapiens, who had accelerated the extinction of species, especially during the Ice Age by overhunting, had to change their diet and turn to agriculture when they could no longer find animals to hunt. But that's another topic. In summary, for one reason or another, we survived. Humanity, faced with challenges and natural conditions that are almost unimaginable, managed to come through and scathe from disasters that would be considered apocalyptic today. But among all the advantages, you may have noticed the most important thing that makes us strong. Communication, speech, being together, helping each other, uniting. When we know how to use this power, nothing can stop humanity, and we can become stronger, multiply, develop, and look to the future with hope. It's actually quite simple. Thank you very much for watching the video until the end. If you like and subscribe to the video, you will make me very happy. Thank you again.